Hello, and welcome to another edition of News 6. I'm Tammy Samuel. Today's show is presented by Mrs. Kathy Snyder's sixth grade class from Central Elementary in Napoleon, Ohio. Our show today will bring you some new ideas and people. With our first story, Christy would tell us about some new additions to our school district. How would you cope with triplets? Our principal, Mr. Tom Condon, is the proud father of triplets. Jennifer Baker talked to him about his sons. What did you think when the doctor said triplets? I was surprised. We were only expecting one child, and I had hoped, I remember leaning back against the wall, hoping that there wasn't a fourth child. I was scared because they were so small, and they were two months early, and it, uh, I was worried for the boys and for my wife. How has your older son, Brian, handled it? Brian has done really well. He is... Uh, six years old and uh, probably handled it better than I have. Um, he's coped with the children real well. He knows their names um, much better than I do. I'll have to ask Brian which one's which sometimes to uh, um, when I call them by name. He'll tell me I have the wrong name. Who's the oldest, the middle, the youngest? Mark is the oldest and then Stephen and then Christopher uh, is the youngest. He was the last one. How do you cope with three crying children at one time? It's difficult. It's very difficult with the, um, the job at school and then coming home at night and uh, dealing with them. We try to stay with them and keep them happy. Uh, at times we just have to let them cry. Mr. Condon says four boys are enough and does not plan on a daughter. As we go from little people to painting, Jennifer will give the story. Pam Jones has been gifted with the talent of painting, and she's been painting since sixth grade. She talked to Tana Fritz about her hobby. How did you get started? I got started when I was in sixth grade, although when I was younger I always drew a lot. and. Uh, in sixth grade, I found out that my cousin was going, going to take private art lessons, so that I wanted to take private art lessons too. So I started there, and then I took it throughout high school, and I also took it in two years in college. What types of artwork do you do? I like to work in acrylic. Um, acrylic dries a lot faster than oil does. I can blend in and acrylic a lot better. I like to do a little bit of drawing and I like to work in my airbrush. It's a lot harder to do because it's it's like holding a pencil but you're a lot further away from the canvas. And I like to work on uh, t-shirts with that. Could you tell us about some of your paintings? Some of my favorites, I have a watercolor that I like to do, and it was, the watercolor was done first, and then I went back into it with pen and ink and outlined the trees and some of the leaves to make it darker. I have an acrylic that I like. It's a cubism-type painting that's done in little cubes all over the painting. It's of a sailboat, and I tried to, uh, I tried to repeat some of the sailboat throughout the whole painting for a balance. I have a favorite oil that I did of a uh, wine bottle and a, a rose. It's like a still life. I, I learned a lot of things from this painting because of the glass. The glass is hard to paint. How long did it take you to paint the mural? It took me about 140 hours to do this mural. And it was all done with latex wall paint with three primary colors, the yellow, the red, and the blue. And the white is mixed with it, too. And most of the colors that I mixed up myself. Painting takes a lot of time, but recently our sixth grade class took the time to participate in a poll. With so much emphasis on polls these days, some of our classmates decided to take part in one, and here are some of the results. One 
Out of 61 students polled, only 51% like country music, while the most popular type of music is hard rock at 77%, and the least popular type of music is classical at 13%. Under the dancing category, the most popular type of dance is rock at 75%, and the least popular is square dancing at 4%. Under the sports category, 89% like swimming, but the most popular sport is roller skating at 90%, and the least popular sport is skateboarding at 23%. Thanks to all of the sixth graders who participated in this poll. Our students also participated in a recent event, the Sesquicentennial Celebration of Napoleon. Anna tells us about it. Napoleon, Ohio celebrated its 150th anniversary in 1984, and we are very proud of its history and celebration. Napoleon became, began as a farming town in 1837, and townspeople wanted their town to be named Henry, after Patrick Henry. But businesses wanted the name Napoleon because they were born fighting. Some early businesses include Napoleon Flouring Mill and Napoleon Woolen Mill. These industries grew with the town, but were soon replaced with businesses like Bank Ohio. Today, after 150 years, the citizens of Napoleon have improved this community and are proud of this town. We enjoyed the, our town celebration and special events, and we enjoyed visiting at a usual home. Tammy has the story. If you think living in an old red brick church might be drab and drafty, you'll change your mind when you enter the home of Betsy Rorden and see the sun drifting through stained glass windows. I talked to her about her unusual home. some of the problems you ran into when you decided to fix up the church? Problems. Uh, some of them were funny problems. You see, when I bought the church, it didn't have a well or any plumbing. Uh, it had an old coal furnace. And so the first thing we had to worry about was whether we could get a well in, because there was no water line in at the, that time. And then the next problem was we had to um, make space for the plumbing because there was practically no crawl space um, at the, in the area where we wanted to do the bathroom and the kitchen. And so we had to saw through all those old uh, hardwood floors and we wore out two saws before we finally got the floors up to dig out the crawl space uh, so there'd be room for the plumber who was a fairly round man. Have you ever had anyone come for church on Sunday morning? Well, I had somebody one Sunday afternoon, um, I was in here studying and um, I just thought I'd get a breath of air and I opened the door and there was a man lying down in the vestibule. He had just kind of thought that any church was a refuge and he was hitchhiking, it was cold out, so he was taking a little nap in the vestibule. <laughs> what things did you leave in the home that were in the church? I did save a couple of pews, but my sister has those. There's nothing in the church. Oh, yes, there is one wonderful thing. Uh, there's a little figure back there that I found behind the altar. And he's a little, apparently, a mite box from the days when uh, they were having uh, uh, missions for the Africans and collecting money for the African missions. And he apparently dates back to that period. How is it different from living in a regular house? space and of course the way this place is situated if you want solitude and quiet you can have it and yet there's plenty of room for a great big party here thank you for joining us be here next week when sixth graders from Payne, ohio will, will present present new six have a nice week